All right, so we are now covering um, special angles in the unit circle. So in our unit circle, we have our special angles, which are based off of our 45, 45, 90, and our 30, 60, 90 triangles. So here it says a unit circle is a circle with a radius of one. So if we look here, they have the radius as one. Um, in trigonometry, the unit circle is centered at the origin and write the six basic trig functions from the unit circle. Okay, so our sofa toa, that's what they're asking for. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then our tangent is opposite over adjacent. So because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, well, the opposite of our angle theta, this is going to be my opposite. This is my adjacent. And this is my hypotenuse. Okay, so my opposite is going to be y. My hypotenuse is 1, so y over 1, which is just my y value. So on the unit circle, your sine is equal to your y value, whatever your y value is. Okay. Um, now for cosecant, it's the opposite. Instead of being y over 1, it's the 1 over y. So it's your hypotenuse over your opposite. That, you can't reduce, it just stays like that. Okay. For cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, my adjacent side is my x value divided by my hypotenuse which is 1, and x divided by 1 is just x. Okay. For secant, it's going to be 1 over x. We've got to flip that around. Okay. Now for tangent, it's opposite over adjacent, so it is going to be y over x. Okay. And for cotangent, it's the opposite. It'll be x over y. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have our ratios here, uh, quadrantal angles. So quadrantal angles, uh, write the coordinates of the points in the unit circle, use the coordinates to write the values of the six trig functions of the quadrantal angles. Um, so pretty much this number here, if our radius of our circle is one from here to here, and then this is going to be one comma zero. Okay. This one, is, and this is our 90 degree angle, or oh, not 90, let's still be zero degrees, or 360 if we came all the way around. The next one here is going to be my 90 degree angle. Okay, this number, our x value is 0, but our y value is 1. Okay, and then this one right here, this one is going to be my 180 degree angle. And so my x value is negative 1, and my y value is 0. And last, this bottom section here, this is going to be um, 270 degrees. And my x value here is 0, but my y value is negative 1. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer that information here. At 90 degrees, my point is 0, 1. Okay. At 180 degrees, my x value is negative 1, my y value is 0. At 270, it's 0, negative 1. And then at 360, it is 0 or 360, it's 1. So just a little refresher, our sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cosecant, I'm going to copy this down. So we said that sine is our y value. So sine is the y value. Our cosine is the x value. So we're going to put an x. And our tangent is y over x. So here I'm going to put y over x. Okay. And then our cosecant, since it's the opposite of sine, it is 1 over y. Since secant is the opposite of cosine, it is 1 over x. And since um, tangent, cotangent is the opposite of tangent, it's x over y. Okay. So here, it is saying sine of y. Well, my y value here is 1. Okay, so sine of y is 1. I mean, sine of 90 degrees is 1. Now, sine of 180 degrees. So since sine is my y value, then that means that at sine of 180 degrees, it is 0. The next one we have 270, so sine of 270 degrees, remember sine is equal to my y value, so my y value here is negative 1. And last at 0 or 360, my y value here is 0, so sine of 0 degrees or sine of 360 degrees is 0. <clears throat> Alright, so for the next one. That's okay. Yes, I was, but it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so for the next one, we have cosine. Cosine is our x values. Okay, so here, cosine of 90 degrees would give us 0. Okay, here, cosine of 
180 degrees would give us negative 1. My x value is negative 1. Um, here, cosine of 270 degrees is 0 because my x value is 0. And then here, cosine of 0 or 360 degrees is 1 because my cosine is 1. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and find the tangent. So the tangent, we are going to have to work a little bit. So we're going to have to take the y value and divide it by the x value. So here, my y value is 1, and we're going to divide it by 0. So 1 divided by 0. Now that gives me undefined. Undefined. Okay, you can't take something and divide it into 0 groups. It's not possible. Okay. Now tangent of 180 degrees. So we're going to take our y value, which is 0, and divide it by our x value, which is negative 1. Now, in this case, 0 divided by negative 1 is going to give us 0. Okay, now 270 degrees. So tangent of 270 degrees, we would have to take our y value, which is negative 1, and divide it by our x value, which is 0. And once again, we get undefined. And lastly, at 0 and 360 degrees, tangent of... 0 and 360 degrees, we would have to take our y value, which is 0, and divide it by our x value, which is 1, which ends up giving us 0. Okay. Now we're going to find cosecant. So cosecant of 1 over y. Okay, so 1 over my y value would be 1 divided by 1, because my y value here is 1, and that gives me 1. Okay. For cosecant, 1 divided by my y value. So 1 divided by 0, that ends up giving me undefined. Okay. Um, cosecant of 270 degrees. We're going to take 1 and divide it by my y value, which is negative 1. And that ends up giving me negative 1. And then last, cosecant of 360 degrees is 1 over 0. Because my y value here is 0. And that is going to give me undefined. So next for secant, secant of 1 over x. So secant here, 1 over my x value here is 0. So 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Secant of 180 degrees. So 1 over my x value is negative 1. So this gives me negative 1. Um, secant of 270, we're going to take 1 divided by my x value, which is 0. In this case, when we simplify, it gives me undefined. <clears throat> and then last, um, 1 divided my, by my x value is 1, so 1 divided by 1 is 1. And last, x divided by y. So my x value here is 0, I divided by my y value, and it's 1, so this is going to give me 0. The next one, I take my x value, which is negative 1, and divide it by my y value, and that's going to give me undefined, because we're dividing by 0, and that's not possible. For cotangent of 270 degrees, we're going to take our x value, which is 0, and divide it by negative 1, and that gives us 0. <clears throat> and then last, um, we take our x value, which is 1, and divide it by our y value, which is 0, and that also gives me a 2 okay. So here it says... Um, the following right triangles are on the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. Okay, so that's my 45 degree angle. <laughs> We're in the first quadrant. Um, use the properties of special right triangles to find the length of the legs of each triangle in simplest radical form. So in our unit circle, we had said that our radius here is 1. So they actually have it labeled here for us that the radius is 1. So that means that x in the square root of 2 because this is our hypotenuse is equal to 1. So we're going to go ahead and solve for x, and the way we do so is to divide both sides by the square root of 2. This cancels, and we get x equals 1 divided by the square root of 2. But we got to remember there is this rule that we can't have a square root on the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. And so here we get the square root of 2, and on the bottom, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. And we can take the square root of 4 and get a whole number that gives us 2. Okay, So that means that these two sides are the square root of 2 over 2. The square root of 2, whoops. 
this coordinates rho over 2. So if that is the same triangle that we have here, um, from here to here is the square root of 2 over 2, which means my x value is the square root of 2 over 2, and my y value here is also the square root of 2 over 2. <clears throat> so it says we need to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, and its reciprocals. <clears throat> So here, I'm going to go ahead and write my coordinates. It's the square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And just a reminder, sine is my y value, cosine is my x value, and tangent is my y divided by my x. Okay. So here, my y value is the square root of 2 over 2. So when I take sine of 45 degrees, my ratio is the square root of 2 over 2. Okay. For cosecant, we got to flip that around, which is 2 over the square root of 2. And we have to rationalize it. So I'm going to rationalize it here to the side so it doesn't get so messy. Which means we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2 to cancel out the square root of 2 on the bottom. So when we multiply both of the square root of 2, that gives me the square root of 4, which is just 2. Okay, so then what happens here? You have a 2 on top and 2 on bottom, and they cancel. So all we're left with is the square root of 2. <clears throat> Alright, cosine of 45 is my x value. Oh, I did it backwards. Whoops. It's a good thing they're the same number. This, oh, this was my y value. And then this one is my x value, which is the square root of 2 over 2. Okay? Which means that for secant, it's going to be that same thing flipped. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole work again of rationalizing in it because it's the exact same process as this one, so it gives us the square root of 2. Okay, last, we have tangent of 45 is our y divided by our x. So my y value, I'm going to do the work here to the side. My y value is the square root of 2 over 2. My x value is the square root of 2 over 2. And so when I divide these, the way we divide them is first we multiply these two numbers, and that's what goes on top, so 2 and the square root of 2. Then I multiply these two on the bottom, and that gives me 2 and the square root of 2. And then 2 divided by 2, the square root of 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1, and that's it. When we divide something by itself, or it's only gets 1. So this is equal to 1, and this is equal to 1. Mm -hmm. All right, so here it says, use a unit circle to evaluate the following. So these are the simple ones. First, it says sine of 180 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my little chart here. Sine of 180 degrees is right here. It is equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and put 0 here. So it's kind of like a little cheat sheet that we're creating. So cosecant, or let me pick the easy ones. Tangent, or no, I think we have this. Cosecant of negative 180 is the same location as positive 180. So cosecant of... Um, 180 degrees here is undefined. So here I'm going to put that undefined. Next one is cosecant of 45 degrees. So cosecant, oh we don't have cosecant there. Cosecant of 45, oh we have it right here. Cosecant of 45 degrees, that is the square root of 2. Um, Cotangent of 90 degrees. So if I look for cotangent of 90 degrees, cotangent of 90 degrees is right here. That is equal to 0. Go ahead and put 0 here. Tangent of 0 degrees. So tangent of 0 degrees. Here's 0 degrees and here's tangent is equal to 0. <clears throat> and then last, tangent of 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 is in here. It is not here. It is one, two, three. Let me go ahead and convert it real quick. Three pi over four, just so we can see that. On three pi over four, if we convert it to degrees, we multiply it times one eighty over pi. The pi cancel out. Let me go ahead and put that in my calculator real quick. Um. 3 times 180 divided by 4, that gives me 135. Oops. This one's a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So just like the previous problem, you make your little triangle here. 
because 135 would be here. That means that our reference angle in here is going to be 45 degrees. Okay. So since our radius here is 1, that means this is the square root of 2 over 2, and this is the square root of 2 over 2. Um, so if we're looking for tangent, we're going to take this divided by this. This one's actually negative because my x values are negative here. This stays positive because it's positive. So when I divide these two, it does give me 1, but it's going to give me negative 1. Um, the next one. Okay, so now these are the 30, 60, 90 ones. So following, the following right triangles are in the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. Um, use the properties of special right triangles to find the length of the legs of each triangle. So here, in this case, they tell us that our radius here is 1. So that means that this is equal to 1. Okay, so if 2x equals 1, we divide both sides by 2 to solve for x. That means x is equal to 1 half. So the side across my 30 is 1 half. And then the side across my 60 is 1 half times the square root of 3, which is going to simplify as the square root of 3 over 2. Okay. So here across my 30, this is 1 half, and this is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Which means my x value here is the square root of 3 over 2, and my y value is 1 half. So here, square root of 3 over 2, and this is 1 half. Okay. Once again, as a refresher, the sine is my y value, the cosine is my x value, and my tangent is my y divided by my x. Okay. So in this case, my y value here is 1 half. That lift is 2 over 1, which is just 2. Cosine of 30 degrees is going to be my x value. So my x value is the square root of 3 over 2. And my secant is going to be that number flipped. So unfortunately, this, um, we can't leave it like that. We do have to rationalize it, which means we need to cancel out the square root on the bottom. Okay, so we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root. And we get 2 and the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. We can take the square root of 9 to get a whole number that gives us 3. So that means this is equal to 2 and the square root of 3 over 3. Okay, last, our tangent of 30 degrees. We're going to have to take our y value. So I'm going to do it off here to the side. We can take our y value, which is 1 half, and we divide it by our x value, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So we multiply the outside ones. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. That's what goes on top. We multiply the inside ones. This is 2 and the square root of 3. Now 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. And we have to rationalize. So I'm going to go ahead and take 1 and the square root of 3. And when we rationalize it, we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. So the top gives me the square root of 3. The bottom gives me the square root of 9. And we can take the square root of 9 to get a whole number. That gives us 3. So here, this would give us the square root of 3 over 3. Now we flip it around for cotangent. So it would be 3 over the square root of 3. And I'm going to go ahead and rationalize that. So we multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. Here we get 3 and the square root of 3 over the square root of 9. The square root of 9 gives us 3. The 3s cancel each other out, and we're left with the square root of 3. Okay, this last section. Um, again, we have our 30, 60, 90 triangles. So the side across our 60, we had already said, is the square root of 3 over 2, which is my y value. The side across my 30 here is 1 half, which is my x value. So I'm going to go ahead and write it here, 1 half, and the square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Just as a reminder, my sign is my y value. I have to put a y up here so I don't mess that up. This is my x value. My tangent is my y divided by my x. <laughs> All right, so sine of 60 degrees is my y value. My y value is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, for cosecant, we have to flip that around. So 2 divided by the square root of 3. And again, we cannot have a square root on the bottom, so we have to rationalize it. Now, I think we did this problem already, so I'm not going to redo it. But it's 2 and the square root of 3 over 3. Actually did the work. If I scroll down just a little bit, did the work right here. Okay. So you can 
can refer back to it in case you don't remember. All right, for cosine, cosine is 60 degrees. So cosine is your x value. So cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And if we flip it around, it gives us 2. Tangent of 60 degrees. So this one we will work out. So tangent of 60 degrees is my y value, which is the square root of 3 over 2, divided by my x value, which is 1 half. So then we multiply the outside ones, and that gives us 2 times the square root of 3 over. We multiply the inside ones, that gives us 2. So then when we cancel the 2s out, that gives us the square root of 3. Okay, so if you start to notice the patterns from the 30 degree angle and the 60 degree angle, they're kind of opposite each other. Now for cotangent of 60 degrees, we flip that around, and it's 1 over the square root of 3. And now we're going to have to rationalize. Okay, so we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. And this gives us the square root of 3 over the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is just 3. So this gives us the square root of 3 over 3. All right, so now they want us to find the exact value of each expression in your answers in simplest radical form when applicable. So just some more practice. So here we have secant of 210 degrees. I'm going to make my graph real quick. Um, 210 would land right here. If this is 180, and from here to here is 210, that means this little angle in here is 30. Okay, secant is the opposite of my cosine. So we're looking for adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine. <laughs> so then we need to flip it around each over 80. Now we said our hypotenuse is 1, and my adjacent side, which is here, is my x value. So my x value at 30 degrees, if I look here, at 30 degrees, my x value, you know what? Secant of 210, we would refer to the secant of 30 degrees, because that's my angle. So I'm going to refer to this one. It is 2 and the square root of 3 over 3. That's how I'm going to put here. 2 and the square root of 3 over 3. The only thing I'm going to check to see is what is my sign in the third quadrant for my cosine. So all students take notes. Oh, <laughs> um, all students take only tangent is positive here, so it has to be negative, and that's it. So the next one, sine of 270 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and look. This is the top part. So sine of 270, here is sine of 270 is negative 1. So secant of 30 degrees. Um, secant, the opposite of secant. Oh, I think we might be able to find it here. Secant of 30 degrees is 2 and the square root of 3 over 3. Found it right here. Um, sine of pi over 6. I'll do this one. So this is my pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Cotangent of negative 270. So negative 270. This is negative 90, negative 180. Negative 270, it is the same if we went in the positive direction. It's the same as 90 degrees. So that's what I'm going to look at. Cotangent of 90 degrees. Um, cotangent of 90 degrees is right here. It's equal to 0. Okay, and then last sign of negative 90. Now, negative 90 in positive terms would be 270. So I'm going to look at the sign of 270. So sine of 270 is negative 1. So here I'm going to have to put negative 1. Okay. So all these tables are kind of messy. They're kind of tricky to keep going back and forth, back and forth. So what we use is what we call the unit circle. So our unit circle here, um, first I'm going to go ahead and take a highlighter. These are my quadrantal angles. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and write in the angles. So these ones I have in pink. <clears throat> so this is 1, 0. This is 0, 1. This is negative 1, 0. And then this one is 0, negative 1. Okay. This one is my 0 degree. So if we went one full circle, it would be 360. In terms of pi, this would be 0. And this would be 2 pi. Okay. Now this is my 90 degree angle. In terms of pi, it is pi over 2. This one is my 180 degree angle. In terms of pi, this would be 1 pi. 
This one is my 270 degree angle. And in terms of pi, this is going to be um, 3 pi over 2. So then next, I'm going to go ahead and highlight my 45 degree angle. So it's the one that cuts right in the middle. This is my 45, because half of 90 is 45. Okay. All of these are going to have the exact same coordinate. Okay. Um, that's all right. So from here to here is 45 degrees. Okay. That's my reference angle. For this one. And so in terms of pi, this is, I believe it's pi over 4. Let me just make sure. Yes, it's pi over 4. And so if we recall at our 45 degree angle, our, it's not right there, so here our coordinate is the square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so I'm not making these numbers up. We already solved for all these numbers. So the square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Okay. And the, so then we add another 45, that gives us 90, plus another 45 gives us 135. So this angle here is 135. In terms of pi, it is going to give us 3 pi over 4. And so on this quadrant, it's still going to be the same numbers as square root of 2 over 2. The square root of 2 over 2. The only thing is that the x value here in the second quadrant, your x values are negative. So there's going to be a negative right here. Okay, so 135 plus another 45 is 180. Plus another 45 is 225. Okay, now this one is going to be 5 pi over 4. Our point is going to be the same, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Now in the third quadrant, both our x value and our y value are negative. Okay. Then we move into the fourth quadrant. So 270 plus another 45, that gets us 315 degrees. Okay. So then all of these have a reference angle of 45 degrees. So 315, this one's going to give us... um. 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. Still the same thing, still the same coordinate, square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. But in this quadrant, our x value is positive, but our y value is negative. Okay, so this is our little cheat sheet that we're making. So then from there, we have our um, 30 degree angle. This is split into 30. So this is 30. My reference angle from here to here is 30. Um, 30 in terms of um, in radians, sorry, is pi over 6. Okay, so then just a little reminder, I'm not making this up. This comes straight from the tables. Our coordinates here are the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Okay, so this one has the same, and this one, they all have the same reference angle. That means the distance from here to here are all the same. Okay, which means that their coordinates are all going to be the same. So square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Um, this one's the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so these numbers are, let's see, 30, 60, 90, 180, 90, 120, 150. In terms of pi, this is going to be 5 pi over 6. Okay, and then I keep moving, 180, this is 210. In terms of 5, 6, this is 7 pi over 6. So this one's going to be 11 pi over 6. And this is 330. 
All right, so I did call the numbers the same. Just a reminder, in the second quadrant, my x value is negative. In the third quadrant, my x and my y are both negative. And in my fourth quadrant, my x is positive, my y is negative. Okay, now the last one. <clears throat> so here is my 60 degree angles. Okay, all of these have the same reference angle, so they're going to have the same coordinate. The only difference is that the signs change. So this one is 60 degrees, this one is 120, this one is, let me see, 240, and this one is 300. In terms of pi, this one's pi over 3, this one's 2 pi over 3, this one's 4 pi over 3, no, yes, this one's 5 pi over 3. And then that's it for the angles. So just referring back to our 60 degree angle, the coordinate. So at 60 degrees, our coordinate is 1 half square root 3 over 2. So that's what I'm going to put here. 1 half square root of 3 over 2. This one, 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Reminder, x is negative. Here, 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Both of them are negative. And then this one, 1 half, and the square root of 3 over 2, and in the fourth quadrant, only your y value is negative. Okay. And then you see this positive negative, it's also a cheat sheet for us. So if we use all students take calculus, all students take, you know when that happens, all students take calculus. So all of them are positive, so we're not going to have any negative. We have sine, cosine, tangent, the opposite of cosine is cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All of those are positive, so all our trig functions will be positive in there. So that's a good way to check to make sure you have the correct sign. Okay, in the second quadrant, we have all students, S, only sine and its opposite are going to be positive, so its opposite is cosecant. The rest, cosine, the opposite of cosine is secant, Tangent, opposite is tangent is cotangent. Those are going to be your negative ones. So if your angle is in the second quadrant, um, you'll be able to tell which ones are positive and which ones are negative. Okay, last. T stands for tangent. Tangent is the only one that's going to be positive and it's opposite. So that means that sine and cosine are going to be negative. The opposite of sine is cosecant and the opposite of cosine is secant. So those are going to be negative. And then, so if all students take, fourth quadrant is calculus, which stands for cosine. So only cosine and its opposite will be positive here. The rest of our trig functions, which is sine and tangent, are going to be negative. Now, the opposite of sine is cosecant. So if sine is negative, so is cosecant. If tangent is negative, so is cotangent. Okay, that's it for me for today, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.